Hi, I'm Mike, and as a kid back in the 1990s, nothing got me more hyped than this guy. To this day, I seek out a steam railway wherever I am in the world. And today, we're going behind the scenes of what must be one of the most beautiful little railways in the world, and they may even give me a shot. Welcome to Talaklin. Talaklin was the world's first preserved heritage railway by a group of friendly volunteers. It started as a railway for a slate mine in the 1860s before the quarrying ended just after World War II, at which point the Talaklin Railway Preservation Society, who doesn't want to be part of that, swung in, taking on the running of the railway. Through landslides, brutal track maintenance and literal derailments, the railway persevered through hard times to now flourish today as the oldest continuous running heritage railway in the world. And now this idiot gets to spend the day having a go. Whilst the engines were being prepped for the day, I had a quick chat with Luke, who's the head of media at the railway. So Luke, you're my chaperone for today. <laughs> you're a volunteer here. What is it like volunteering at this railway? Uh, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It, it's a lot of fun. There's more to volunteering here than just with the lovely steam engines. There's so okay. many roles. So there's such a, a breadth of stuff that you can do here, even if it is, you know, selling tickets in the booking office. You know, if you want a nice relaxed yeah. day, that's an option. But yeah, yeah there's, there's so much you can do, and it's it's a very family-like atmosphere here. So it's really nice. Well, I'm thoroughly looking forward to my day. <laughs> so, what is the plan for today? What we're we going to get up to? Well, um, so you're going to have a little drive, which is going to be fun, and we're going for a trip on the engine as well, and yeah. actually get to grips with what's in the cab and how these things work. Uh, as you've probably seen as well, in the morning we've got a lot of prep work to get yeah. these even started. So this will be coming out of the shed ready to pick up the carriages around 11 o'clock. But the crew were here at quarter past eight in the morning to get the fire lit and warm and you know ready to go. Cool. Well, I cannot wait. And again, thank you for having me. It's going to be it's awesome. Once the engine was warmed up and ready to go, it was time to jump aboard for a quick crash course with driver Graham and fireman Andrew. Yeah, good job. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Sensitive, isn't it? Right. Now I'll just gently push that forward, just past halfway. Just keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Feel the brakes come on. Yeah. So push it right cool. on. Put it in reverse. So just right to the back. All the way back. God, that feels good. Right. Now you got to look the other way. Yeah. Brake off. Oh, I could do that all day. <laughs> right, let's gently back. Just yeah. Tap back and tap. Come back. Oh, look at that. Feel the momentum in it. It's amazing. Right, so shut it off now. Yeah. And then just do the same with the brake. Just gently pull. Okay, then pull on. Forward. All the way forward. Yep. 
Right. Wow. Now we'll have to put it on the train. Okay. We'll have to do it. And this is the bit now where you can hit things. So okay. We have, to be, we have to be quite careful now. Was that all good? Did I do a good job? Yeah, very good. Gentle? Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, gentle. It all just feels so solid. It's amazing. With my boyhood dream fulfilled, it was time to connect up the carriages, head down to the first station and start the day's work. So before we head off up into the valleys, I thought we should have a look at how one of these things work a narrow gauge steam engine. A steam engine needs two fundamental things, water and fuel, the fuel in this case being coal. There's a firebox in there, and that is then lit to create a fire, and then you've got a boiler that is full of water. The boiler has boiler tubes running through it, and the fire from the firebox heats the water through those boiler tubes. The water heats up and creates steam. The steam is then controlled by something called the regulator, which you saw me operating. That's essentially the throttle of the train. That controls the amount of steam that travels down to this main cylinder here. In there, there is a piston. That is then connected to a connecting rod, which is connected to the driving wheels of the train. Then above the main cylinder, you've got a smaller cylinder that has a sliding valve in it, and that controls the fresh steam coming in and the used steam leaving. That then makes this a reciprocating piston, drives the wheels and sends you on your way. Then that used steam travels up into the smoke box where it then gets pumped out the chimney, and there you go, steam engines. So I have to make sure to stay bang in the middle because we've got Graham here, the driver, and Andrew here, the fireman, doing their thing, and I really don't want to get in the way of what they're doing. It does mean I have by far the hottest seat in the house, but that's my payment for the trip. I've got a little window above my head here and I can see the steam, the smoke coming out of the engine. This is fantastic. So, so Andrew, take me through what these are here. Sure, okay, so what we've got here are um, gauge glasses that show me how much water I've got in the boiler. Okay. So the water level I need to manage so that it's higher than here and lower than there at all times. And of course the water's being used all the time, I've turned into steam and used to drive the train. So as that steam's used, I've got to replace the water. Okay. And maintain that level. And do we need to fill up on the way up or? <laughs> Will we yes. have enough water to do the full trip? Uh, we have enough water to do the full trip, but we're still time to run. And yes. Yeah, so we will top it up because we can. But if we were pressed to do the whole trip without, we could get away with it. Sure, okay. So they are coming back into Pendray. So we're going to stop by the signal box or put the post on the sport here. I'll have to change this token for the one for the next section. So that's like your pass to the next bit of track. That's the authority for the next section. Yeah, yeah cool. So this is just on the move, is it? Yeah, yeah. Across. bring glass. Henry glass. <laughs> on the whistle. Are you allowed to go for it whenever or are there certain places you're not allowed? No, 
crystals do actually mean things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we use it any time of the warming. Yeah. But the warm is certain whistle boards, so it's a requirement to whistle. Yeah. We're whistling up for our signal and whistling up for a station or whatever. Okay. Now, if any of you guys have watched the Top Gear special where Clarkson was the fireman in that steam train, seeing what it's all about, there's no way he was the fireman the entire way from London to Edinburgh. It's far too hot, it's far too nasty. He definitely just did it for the camera. Yep. <laughs> Andrew agrees. The stage you look at the end, I'm definitely not happy with the job. They live like a Victorian chimney sweep. <laughs> What's the nod to 60 on one of these? <laughs> we never get to 60. <laughs> Super clean. You'd expect it to be super grimy in here, it's not. They look after it. They look after it so well. So Andrew, is a steam engine very much like a car engine where you can listen in to what's going on? What, what's the steam engine telling you right now? Right now it's, it's uh, just accelerating away from the station, so um, we're, we're about to climb a bit more steeply, yeah. and so I, I the probe will need to use a little bit more steam just to... Uh, so it, it's just telling me at the moment, it's telling me it's happy, there's, there's not a lot more needs to be done. Like, oh, I'm, back I'm, I'm, I'm listening to what the engine's doing, and I'm feeling what the engine's doing, Okay. how it's responding to the adjustments I make. Be it the reversing the or be it the regulator. So essentially, are you listening to the rate of chuff? That's that's part of it, yes. Okay. <laughs> Chuffs per minute. I'm filling a steam engine with water. I am now fully in an episode of Thomas the Tank Engine. And I'm effing loving it. level of preservation at this railway is absolutely top notch and this is a perfect recent example of that. There used to be a watering point here in the 1860s. It fell into disrepair and it ended up completely disappearing. But through funding from the members here, they've almost perfectly rebuilt the entire watering point that uses the natural stream tumbling down the hill to then feed water to the engines. So it tumbles down, goes through a sluice gate, down this trough, and then is fed into the water tank of the steam trains. And they didn't just rebuild it perfectly, they actually looked at the photos and realized that the final bridging piece wasn't actually put together that well. So they told the guys that were rebuilding this, make all the other ones nice, but please make this one a bit dodgy compared to the rest. Next level. It's 
been an incredible day seeing just how passionate the volunteers are at this railway. And speaking of passion, despite mine, and I imagine the passion of many of you guys watching this right now, Heritage Railways aren't quite as popular as they used to be. Attendance peaked here back in 1973 at 100,000 people in that year, but that's kind of shifted slowly down to more like 45,000 people a year here now. The big cause of that has been the advent of cheap budget flights to continental Europe, which has really hit the UK seaside resorts like this pretty badly. And also, I think there's something to be said for the transition in children's television, where once the there was practical effects using actual train models, there's now CGI and cartoons. Where once Thomas had to compete with Postman Pat, it now has to compete with the likes of Paw Patrol. So it's had to keep up with the times and I think it won't seem as real to the kids as it was back in the 80s and 90s and that has meant maybe they don't have the same passion for heritage railways as my generation did. Just a hunch. On a more positive note, I found this in the gift shop. Now, Richard Hammond has recently built a mezzanine floor in his barn and it's ripe to be turned into some sort of man cave. Are you thinking why I'm thinking? Leave it with me. Today's video was about steam engines. What next? 